here we have it guys. Two and a half years of owning the Jayco Journey Outback. And it's time for us to move it on to another family. So in today's video, we're gonna talk a bit about our ownership of the van, what we like and what we don't like about it, and ultimately why we've made a decision to sell the van and move on. So guys, as you can probably imagine, this decision hasn't come lightly, and to be completely honest, I'm kind of uh, regretting the sale already. However, there are some reasons as to why we're moving on this Jayco journey, and today we're gonna to go through them. But before we do, to understand fully some of our reasoning behind selling the van, you sort of have to understand where we've come from and the background of camping and uh, pulling trailers that we've experienced. When we first started, we just started by using swags and those dome tents that you pick up from your local camping store. Super basic, nothing fancy, and that did us for the first couple of years. Moving on from the dome tents, we decided to have a look at using a rooftop tent. So when I owned my Nissan Patrol, I then put a rooftop tent on the top and we used that for a short time as well. This was great, however again, it was just something that didn't quite suit our needs and we found it a little bit frustrating and time consuming, so that went off and we moved on to the next option. Now for us, the next option was a camper trailer. Again, it was a very basic camper trailer. It was just a box trailer with a tent on top and a basic fold-out kitchen at the back. No batteries, no electronics, uh, one water tank with a hand pump and heaps of storage. Now again, this particular camper trailer did really, really well for us, but after about a year, year and a half of owning that, we decided it wasn't for us as it was just the two of us and it was massive. From there, we just went on to some uh, Oz Tent 30 second tents. Now if you've seen some of my other videos, you know that I absolutely love those tents. They are a great system, super easy to set up, uh, fairly light uh, and pretty small as well. That means you don't have to carry around a trailer or a van with you. Now these tents worked really, really well. We've owned our Oz Tent for six years now and uh, we've had a lot of uh, good times in it. However, once we started having kids, which we now have two of, the Oz Tents became a little bit limiting and a bit small for what we wanted. So we started camping with our firstborn when she was only six months old. We did a trip up to Kalbarri with some family and one of our family members had a caravan at the time. After doing this trip, even with amenities present, we decided to have a look at something like the caravan behind us just to see what our options were and to see what sort of benefits we can get out of using something like this. So as soon as we started looking into caravanning and having a look at some of the other people that we know that own caravans, we became hooked. We began researching all different types of makes, models, layouts, weights. Now there's not a single moment since owning this van that I regret buying it. This van has got to be one of the best value for money vans on the market that has bunk beds and a toilet and shower for the size and weight that it is. So a little bit about why we chose this particular van. Now as a lot of you know, Jayco is a huge company here in Australia and it dominates about 47% of the RV market and there's good reason for that. They are a great value for money van and the options they have and the layouts, the sizes are enormous. This one here is a 17 foot pop top 17.58-3. That means that it's 17 foot long in its body length and uh, it's got two bunks and a combined toilet and shower. When we were looking at buying a caravan for the first time, we had some boxes that we wanted ticked when towing something this large. For me personally, I wanted it to be fairly off-road capable, at least able to go down some of the tracks that we do to get to some of the campsites. And for the wife, she wanted a toilet and shower ensuite. And to be honest, I 100% agree. If you're gonna be towing around a box this large, you want those sort of comforts that you don't get in, say, a camper trailer. So another big consideration for us when we're looking at vans were the weights. Back when we ordered this van at the end of 2017, we were then driving a Prado 150 series. And this is the uh, pre-facelift version, so it could only tow 2.5 tonne. Now looking on the market, Jayco here were one of the only manufacturers that made a van this size with a big bed at the front, two bunks, and a combined shower and toilet that fit within that two and a half tonne uh, ATM load rating. Along with this, Jayco are gonna be one of the best value for money vans. This van here is about 20 to 30 grand cheaper than any of its equivalents on the market. Now don't get me wrong, there are some uh, compromises there when you do look at value. Sometimes the build quality or the features just aren't quite up there with its competitors. However, for us, for our first time van, we were happy with this choice. So how about we jump on inside and we go over what we have enjoyed and what we haven't enjoyed about this particular van over the last two and a half years.
Now for us, caravanning was completely new. We had never done it before. We had never towed something this big, nor have we had the facilities and the appliances that we have on board with this van. So everything for us was a steep learning curve. Now from picking up that van, we drove straight down to the southwest of WA to give it a go. Granted, they were just in caravan parks, but we got out there and did a week of camping on that first trip. As you may know from some of my other videos, we've done a lot of uh, off-road modifications or at least add-ons anyway to try and protect the van and get it a little bit further when taking it to some places that most Jayco's probably don't get to. So in June, July of 2018, we took this what was a brand new van through across the Nullarbor into uh, Port Augusta in South Australia, up to the NT, the East and West McDonald Ranges, and then through down to Laverton using the Great Central Road. Now most people would uh, definitely advise taking a Jayco or a caravan for that matter down a road like that. But doing the off-road modification we did to this van, it did very well and nothing went wrong. Now since that big trip, we've done many trips, most of them varying between a weekend trip locally to a couple of weeks down, down south or up north in WA. So my personal experience with Jayco has been fairly okay. The sales and service are fairly average and to be honest I wasn't overly impressed with the service provided when I bought this van brand new. However, I am fairly satisfied with the van itself. We've had very little warranty work done to this van and very little has gone wrong. As you've probably seen from a lot of my videos, I try and explain a lot of the reasoning and the evidence behind the opinions that I have on certain topics, including that of this particular Jayco van. Now with our van in particular, as you've seen from my off-road uh, modifications video, if you have watched that, I've gone uh, quite far in terms of putting steps in place to protect this van while we're traveling to those more remote places. And I can say, that we've had hardly any warranty issues. We've had a plastic clip on the shower door and a drawer rebuilt. No structural issues, no issues with the pop top mechanism or any of the appliances. Not everything everyone tells you is gonna be 100% true. Definitely take it into consideration, but do your own research and look after your gear and it's gonna take you that little bit further. Let's go over what we do like in this particular van. So the first one is what you saw earlier from outside, and that is the setup time. This is a pop top van, obviously. However, the setup time is about 60 seconds when you've had to practice at it. It is super quick, super easy. You come inside and everything's set up. This is one of the reasons we chose a pop top caravan rather than something like the Jayco Expander. There's no setting up, no pushing beds out. If the weather's bad outside, you push the pop top up, open the door and you've got a nice area inside, no wet beds, no wet canvas, super easy. Now another thing that we really liked is the fact that you can do it with one person, which means that when our kids were really young and we started camping, one of us could be looking after the kids and the other one could be setting up the van, making sure it's right ready for them to come straight into bed to have a meal or whatever else they need. So, so far I've talked about how good this van is, how well it's worked for our family. So why am I selling it? Well, there's three main reasons, so let's have a look at what they are. So the first big reason for us selling the van is this here. These are the weight ratings and the capacities of this particular van. Now in particular, we're looking at the tear and the ATM weights on this van. This is, gives us the loading capacity and how much gear that we can put inside this van. Now from Jayco, this van can only take 475 kilos. Now that might sound like a lot, being almost half a ton, but keep in mind this van's got two water tanks and two gas bottles on the front. Fill the water up, put a couple of full gas bottles on the front, and there's 200 kilos gone straight up. That leaves you with 275 kilos of packing gear on the van itself. Now this really isn't much when you start adding things like jerry cans, bikes, webbers, uh, fire pits, and all the gear you need to go away on a trip. We did have this van weighed once for a five day caravan trip and we're actually 50 kilos over just with enough supplies, food, water, and all the things we need for five days. Now in 2022, we are planning a full lap of Australia for a year of full-time travel. And this van with 475 kilos of loading capacity just isn't quite enough for our needs. So there are ways of increasing that ATM of your van, but this is quite involved and can be quite costly. In addition to that, increasing the ATM on this van would probably only get about another 125 kilos from it, which would take up to about 600 kilos. Now although that is a lot more and would help significantly, we are looking at other options at the moment. So the second biggest reason for us selling this van is this here. This is the width of this particular van. Now this van is not different to any other Jayco that's made, nor most of the other manufacturers that produce caravans in the Australian market. Being 2,470 mil wide, 2.47 meters, which is just shy of an official oversized, it allows a lot more gear and a lot more comfort and room inside the van. 
However, if you've watched our channel, you'll notice that there's a bit of a theme going on with our videos. Preparing the vans for off-road travel, hitting those remote tracks, and trying to camp where no one else gets to. A van like this doesn't make it very comfortable when we get to those locations. However, something like this just isn't quite designed for those narrow 4x4 tracks, and it just simply isn't gonna to get to certain locations. This is not saying this van isn't capable, it has taken us to a lot of places, many of which I've shared with you guys on the channel. However, 2,470 mil wide, which is a little bit too wide to get to some of those places we need to get to. Now, it was always our plan to sell this van at the end of 2020 or the beginning of 2021 in order to start looking for something new for that big full-time lap around Australia. Now, the thing that pushed us to sell at this particular time is the current market conditions. With the health pandemic we're going through, closing off the WA borders, the lack of supply with some of the manufacturers, including that of Jayco shutting down for a short time, and the increase in demand of local travel within Australia, the demand for these types of vans has gone up, which also does lift the price a little bit. Now, as someone who doesn't want to lose a whole lot of money on a new vehicle, seeing that return on investment and the opportunity that presented itself there, I couldn't help but take it while I could get it. So along with those three major reasons as to why we're selling the van, there are a couple of minor reasons that sort of go along with the same theme. The first one is the layout of the van. Now this is something that's gonna be particular to every family or every person who buys a van, but for us, this first van has just really helped us understand what we do and don't like and need when we're off camping out in the bush. The second reason is also that of off-grid capabilities. Now, power is not really an issue in this van with the solar and the battery that we've got with the appliances we run. However, water is always the limiting factor. Now, this van comes with two tanks that we can last between five and six days if we're being fairly scarce, and that's including having very brief showers as well. And you can add a third water tank to these vans, but that would then start to impose and make it even more difficult for the major reason number one with on the van, which is the weight ratings, pushing our weight loading capacity to even smaller for the rest of our gear. So the next option we're going to be looking at, off-grid capabilities and length of time we can stay out of towns, out of caravan parks is definitely going to be a big consideration. So we've talked a lot about what we do like about the van and the whole lot of the reasons as to why we want to sell the van at the moment. But there's one thing I do want to make very clear, especially to those who are looking at buying a van, whether it be a camper trailer, a pop top, a full van, an expander, whatever it is. There's going to be a lot of people out there with their opinions on certain makes, models, layouts, types, etc. The only thing that matters when you're buying a van is what works for you and your family. There's no particular model, make, brand, whatever it is, that is any necessarily better than another one. What you need to find is what works for you. Whether your constraints be that of budget, whether it depends how many kids you have, whether you're just a couple looking at camping, you need to find a solution that works for you. And that's gonna be different for every single person who makes a purchase. If there was the best van out there with the best layout, they would be everywhere and everyone would drive one. So keep that in mind, there is no right or wrong answer. Everything that you do modify or don't do to your camper trailer or van is going to be that of a compromise and that's going to be completely up to your personal preferences and your opinions on what works and what doesn't for your family. So there you have it guys, that is the reason we are selling our Jayco 17.58-3. Now this video is not going to be released until it is sold, so if you're watching this, this van has been sold and is no longer ours. Now, I want to assure you guys, this is not the end of the YouTube channel, although I owe a lot of the success of the channel to this van, both the fact that it is a van that we've taken off-road and the fact that it's a Jayco, there are still plenty of more videos coming. It may be another number of months before we do replace this van. However, we're going to be doing a lot of camping, full driving, and a lot more reviews and modifications to our 200 series Land Cruiser in the meantime. I can guarantee you that something else is definitely coming in the future, and I can assure you, There'll be a lot of videos, a lot of information, and a lot of reasoning behind why we chose that particular option coming in the future. So guys, I hope you stick around. I hope you enjoyed the video. Although I personally didn't enjoy it so much, I do kind of regret selling this van. It has been an awesome van for our family. And I hope you guys can come up with some solution for your family and your setup that works really, really well for you guys. If you have any questions, any queries, want any advice on this particular van, or any other questions in relation to caravanning or picking a camper trailer for you and your family, make sure to hit us up on Exploring Oz or on Facebook or Instagram, and I'll be sure to try and get back to you. Otherwise, let's have a quick look at some of the memories that we've made as a family in this van, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.